Hi everybody! I know that you can't wait to jump into PyRevit code and start creating your VPA forms already. But before we do that, let's talk about something really important. I want to talk about debugging your XAML code, because you will encounter errors, and that's okay. In general, it's not hard to avoid them, because whenever you're going to write anything with your XAML, you can see changes instantly in the UI preview window. But you still have to click somewhere around the preview so it updates to the latest code. And if you wrote something new and your form is broken now, well, Ctrl-Z is probably your best friend to get back to working code and try again adding new components. In general, I just want to quickly show you how it will look, where to see the error messages, and what would you do when you encounter issues with your XAML code. So you're not surprised when it happens, but I won't go really deep in showing all possible errors and solutions. Just take one step at a time when you create your XAML code and pay attention to the preview window to avoid them in the first place. So now I'll just go to Visual Studio and we will use the code from the previous lesson and let's just create a few errors and see what happens and how can we solve them. So here is my form and first of all, let's just rename this file. Let's say that I want to organize it the same as my lessons and I'm going to rename to something new. Let's write it new file name, whatever it is. The moment you do that, your form disappears and if you wait a little bit, it kind of tries to load, you're going to see an error. If that doesn't happen, we can close it, we can open it again, and either you're going to see this form right away, or normally there's going to be an error that it cannot load it, and then here on the top there's going to be click on reload. Now we have this form which already works, but now let's just imagine that somehow we're working here and accidentally we delete the closing tag. The first thing you notice that this form is still kind of showing up, it's working. And this is because we need to click on this preview canvas. The moment we do, it tries to update all the changes and you can see invalid markup. You can see right here, view code, and then there's also gonna pop up this kind of error list on the bottom. I'm gonna click here on the view code and it can take you to where does this issue happen. In this case, it's very simple, it's just missing a tag. And it tells you here, expected the following token. And there, then there's this kind of closing arrow key. So let's put it here and see. That's okay. Now. Next, let's just write the text and see what happens. I'm gonna do like this, okay, invalid markup, click on view code, and you see it doesn't select the test, let's just scroll up, it selects an element before that, and that's very common in Python too. Sometimes your error is here, but it gives you the line before that, and it confuses some people, but over time you get used to that. It tells you here that the specified value cannot be assigned to the collection following type was expected UI element. What it refers to is that we need to provide here a proper UI element, like, like a button, for example. Now, let's say we created a button, we come here, we again get an issue, we click on it, and this time it gives us here to the stack panel. So this is going to be a bit confusing, why does it take it here? And the reason is because we have this button here, which is not closed. Now we can start clicking here and see, okay, right here it says closing tag for element button was not found. and Right here, you can see the line is 43, and it still takes us here for some reason, when in reality, it happens on the line 33. But you can see that first, it occurs on line 36. So before separator, it knows that it's somewhere here. It even highlights me here. So let's just add here, closing tag. And now, obviously, it works. All errors are gone. Now, let's try maybe to set some kind of wrong margin. Instead of margin, let's say that we misspelled it, and it's like this. Again, it's going to tell you the property Margie was not found in the stack panel. So we already know that there is something wrong with the property. And if we're going to click on view code, it goes straight to this property, which is wrong. Let's bring it back. Now let's provide here something wrong in the margin of the doc panel. In this case, you can see that invalid value for the property margin, but it doesn't break the form. It's just going to take kind of default value or something. Maybe let's put something like font weight 22. It also doesn't break your form, but in here you can see invalid value for property font weight 22, line 23, right? So overall, it has pretty good debugging capabilities. It points out to the mistakes, but sometimes the mistakes are quite weird. Now let's create something like test and see what happens if I'm just going to provide a wrong thing. All right, it just tells me that test is not supported and that's okay because there is no class or anything like that. So it's aware about all available classes as well. To be honest, I don't even know what kind of other errors I can make. Let's maybe remove this one, but I think it's still going to work. It just might look different. Oh no, it breaks it. All right, you can see right away because of that, we got a lot of different errors. And when you get errors, try to start from the start. Because usually this is where it first happens, in this case on line one. 
the window doesn't exist in the namespace blah 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 presentation and that's okay and you can see that it goes all the way and lists that all classes cannot be found because as you remember this xml and s whatever it's called this is like an import in your python right and i just broke my import so it cannot bring all these classes that are necessary therefore everything is pretty much broken let's bring it back and now it works let's see what happens if we remove that one and nothing happens because as i told you this one is used to define certain things like this and now it doesn't work but if i'm going to bring ba back this import and put it there now it works so this one is made so we can support this kind of x name x refers to this form itself and then the name is just going to be test so later in the python we'll write self test and it's going to refer to this tag panel but i'm going to show it in another lesson all right, so this is the first line of attack. When you get an error, just try to look what line does it happen, why it happens, and can you go back? Or maybe you can just close the tag. Maybe it's misspelling. These are very simple. Sometimes it won't be as simple. I cannot really come up with a good example right now, but let's say that something is missing here and I get lots of these errors and I'm not sure what's happening. I just don't get where it comes from. I'm just going to grab and copy this whole thing. Then obviously we're going to bring some friend like ChatGPT, Claude, whatever you use, and just write, fix it. I'm not going to explain anything because it will figure out that this is a XAML format. I don't think I need to provide anything else. When we will be working with PyRevit, you would also be recommended to bring here your Iron Python code as well. Then it knows here is the XAML and here is how you connect this XAML to the Revit. But ideally it should be a working code at first and then already you bring kind of the broken one. Now let's have a look, it wrote me here, here is the fixed thing and tells me the combo box in the third section was missing closing star. This is great, I'm just gonna copy without checking anything, pasting back and now my form is back and it's working. Overall, I had really good results asking ChatGPT for help and getting solution to my problems. So it's another secret to solving your issues and just in general writing VPF. And again, the last module will focus specifically on AI so you know how to get the most out of it. But first, focus on the basics. You need to understand it first so you know what to ask when you have issues or when you want to create something. And in general, remember that the more context you provide when you have your problems, the better solutions you will get. And it's not just about ChatGPT or other LLMs. Even when you ask for help in the community, when people describe their problem in detail, they tell what kind of steps they try to make, they provide their code, and they display all error messages, it becomes a breeze to help them solve it. Because I know exactly what went wrong, well, in case I do. And it's very simple to provide you the right solution, tell you different alternative, and so on. And I often see when people describe their problem, other people jump in and they also help, because they understand your issue and they can help you right away. So I hope this was useful for you to see how to debug your XAML code in Visual Studio and that you can always ask ChatGPT to help you fix your issues. Now, I think you're ready to jump into Python code and actually start creating simple forms for your Parevit tools. There's a lot to cover, so buckle up and I'll show you in the next module where we will create a new form and make it warm with your Parevit buttons. I will see you soon and I want to wish you happy coding.